I, Tara Doyle and King, the President and CEO of the Puyallup Sumner Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to the C-Suite Chamber Life. We are continuing our series on Women's History Month here in the city of Puyallup. And we have a fantastic woman that's definitely left her mark. Uh, she is known for putting on fantastic races. More than that, though, I think you're going to find the way that she uses these races to really bring community together. Um, she's playing a role in economic development and the way that she's bringing these runners into businesses. So I'm excited to uh, introduce you all to Miss Kim Field, the executive director of All Things Fun Sports. Come on in, Kim! I don't dance. You don't. You should dance it. She's dancing. I'm dancing. Yeah. We're dancing. <laughs> You're funny, Tara. I know. You had to know that was going to come out in me. Yes. When you put a great song like Queen on there. Yep. Well, welcome, Kim. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm so happy to have you here. I am happy to be here. You know, before I jump in, I, I would be remiss to not mention that you played a bit of a role in helping Puyallup recognize Women's History Month and in some conversations that might have led up and, and chatting with different, um, yeah. different folks, potentially. It was actually my brainchild, actually. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. I, thought. I approached um, Councilman um, Adler, and we talked about it, and we looked into it, and I gave her some ideas, and she ran with it. Oh, I love it. I am very happy with that. I excited because it was 134 years. It's never happened. Yeah. And That's I was awesome. so glad that you were there to get a proclamation, and it was so amazing that night. It was such a great night. Well, I kind of like that we've got a city that, you know, you can have an idea. Um, it can be meaningful to the community. And so quickly, oh, you're, you're going to be sinking and sinking. Let's, yep. Why don't you stand up and let's get you squir squared away. I was like, what the hell? Why does it keep lowering? <laughs> I'm like, where are you going? Kid, where are you going? <laughs> well, I just figured you wanted to be taller than me for a change. <laughs> Yeah. Well, okay, so where we were was um, this fantastic proclamation that the city of Puyallup has done, and you've played an integral role in, and I just love that even new to the position, Councilwoman Lauren Adler wrote a very meaningful proclamation that Keep was adopted, and, and there she goes again. <laughs> Bye, Kim! Can See you later! Yeah, yeah, we can stand. Let's yes. just stand. Let me stand. I do better stand. <laughs> I fidget. That could be the problem. I fidget. Okay, Kim. And let me be powered by Diet Coke. There we go. Powered by Diet Coke. I love it. Well, we got the proclamation um, discussed, and, and I aptly uh, giving you some credit for that, too. So. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. It was, like I said, it was an amazing night, you know, and we can find inspiration anywhere and mm -hmm. look out in our community. Yeah. And we have just some incredible women in our community, and I'm so thankful to be a part of each and every one of their lives. Yeah. Oh, you are. You're making your mark. I love it. Making your own history. Yeah. All right, Kim, I, I love this, and I, I uh, love taking us back to, you know, we know who Kim Fields is today, but, you know, at one point she was a little baby. Uh, and yeah. She wanted to be somebody when she grew up. Well, you <laughs> I know. Where this baby voice is coming from. I don't know either, but, you know, I'm a Puyallup kid. I graduated okay. from Puyallup High School. And if I go back to way, way back when I was a little kid, I wanted to be a DJ. Oh. Well, you're kind of getting to play that out at the beginning of the um, races. Actually, I was a DJ. <laughs> my parents said I had oh, to get yeah. a big person job because I was on my third radio station, and it's just not very stable. So. Yeah. But I've always been part of the recreation sports concept, okay. so it all kind of falls into how all things fun sports came about. All right. Well, we're going to, we have a few more chapters before we get to that chapter. Um, so you grew up in Puyallup. Did yep. you go to the local schools there? I graduated or? from Puyallup High School. I was oh, born nice. at Good Samaritan Hospital. So, oh, fantastic. yeah. fantastic. Really, Puyallup. Yes. Awesome. What was your first job? Um, my first job was... Uh, a DJ. It was a DJ. Yeah. Okay, nice. Was that um, for events or radio? No, radio. Or being on the radio. Oh, wow. How old were you? Uh, probably 19, 20. Wow. Nice. What did you do to win that um, job over? I went to broadcasting school. Okay. Yeah. Tell me about that experience. Um, It was fun. You know, you go to Green River and broadcasting 150 years ago is a lot different than it is today. Oh, I bet we can all be broadcasters. Yeah. Like right now. Right. So um, <laughs> it was different. Just understanding how to, you know, fortunately, I'm really gifted at public speaking and I'm not afraid of it. So it works. That's helpful. 
Absolutely. How um, how were you in school, and what kinds of subjects did you like, not like, or? Clearly, um, <laughs> recess and sports were my thing, yeah. PE. Um, school was a challenge because they weren't understanding dyslexia mm. back when I, and I was well into college before somebody realized the problem that I had. Wow. So school was really a struggle. How did that come about? How did somebody detect that? Um, they finally were looking and saw all my numbers and my math quest were correct. They were just in the wrong order, always flipped. Oh. And so they did some testing and they found out. Okay. And so what kinds of things have you done to be able to kind of overcome that over the years? Um, I stand and I um, stare a lot and I repeat it a lot in my head. It was because, mm -hmm. you know, back in that day, they really didn't have a lot of training. So it was pretty much self-trained. Um, I will give one little bit of credit to my mom for who I am. Mm -hmm. um, because growing up, I missed school one Friday a month to go to union meetings and mm -hmm. go to strike votes and really? feed people on the picket line. So um, we always joke that my first words were not mom or dad, it was union solidarity. Oh, I love it. And so um, was your mom part of a union and this was you? I mean, yeah, yes, my mom was that? a union steward for uh, Boeing at 751. Okay. So yeah, it was so really cool. you got cool. exposed as a, at a young age? To um, yeah, I remember one of my being in junior high, being taken out of school to go feed people on a picket line because she felt that was more of important education for me. So advocacy at a young age. Very much so. I was at strike votes and understood contract negotiations with them and yeah. Oh, interesting. And it breaks my heart every day when I see what people don't realize they're giving up when they negotiate these new contracts mm -hmm. or big cash bonuses mm -hmm. and they're throwing away rights that she fought hard for. Aw, I'm the ebb and flow of society. And, yep. Right? Yep. Um, so uh, went to school, uh, was a DJ. What did we do after that? Um, I worked for Pearl Parks and Recreation and Recreation. There's the, another recreation yeah. conduit. Yeah. What yeah. was your job there? Um, I worked a lot with youth sports, so umpiring, gym supervisor, stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, along the way, so as a DJ, I imagine um, it is a pretty much a more of an independent kind of a role. You and, and the discs at the time. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> um, but when you think about some roles that had you in a position where you had a boss or a direct report, um, I'm always intrigued with who along the way either mentored or demonstrated great leadership to you. Also, I think some of the more valuable lessons also happen to those that maybe weren't that successful at leading you and, and, and things you might not wanted to have done. Well, I mean, I worked with my uh, family business, which I would rather not talk about. But okay. But it did. It made me realize a lot of things. And I, I really just kind of like bounced around mm -hmm. until I started what we were doing. And this is where my home is. Yeah. I mean, I really... So um, a little while ago, I spent a lot of time playing softball growing up okay. and even into my adult years. Yeah. And I retired. And I went to Florida and retired in the best possible place mm -hmm. on a major league ball field with some of the greatest people and my closest friends. Nice. And I remember calling my business partner, Amy, and saying, you know what? I love the life I have now. Mm -hmm. So it all brought me here. Mm -hmm. And every journey brings you here. Right. To where you are today. It right. doesn't matter. It's still part of it. What your past was, it brings you. I mean, mm -hmm. from understanding politics and advocacy at a very mm -hmm. young age to what I do today, mm -hmm. it all played a major role in my life. And so uh, what exactly was, I guess, the precipice for then starting? So you, you retired off of... The, kind of the softball career yeah. and then now uh, um, your business partner my business partner we started you know we we both come from recreation backgrounds mm -hmm. you know she was a basketball player I played softball I worked for Parks and Rec and we were wondering what could we do mm -hmm. and we we bounced around doing a number of things with all things on sports in the beginning we did softball tournaments because we could do it in our sleep kind sure. of thing it's easy sure. then we did a couple golf tournaments okay we even did cornhole okay well before it's time. You know, we were right there when Cornhole was big. We brought yeah. it to some communities and nice. started, you know, helping the economic development in Long Beach, Washington. Mm -hmm. We even did some um, adaptive sports stuff. So we did a, a wheelchair basketball tournament one year. Oh, and wonderful. Somebody said, hey, you guys want to do a run down here in Long Beach? Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, sure. How hard could it be? 
God, I was stupid. Uh, <laughs> it stuck, though. It did. It the really has. The stuck. And why have the runs sort of risen to the top um, of your focal point? Because we love the community we built. Mm-hmm. Um, we started with 50 people on Thanksgiving morning here. Mm-hmm. And now, how long ago was this? Eight years. Okay. Great. Eight years ago. Congratulations. And now we have over 600, and we're in two locations on Thanksgiving, and we host 24 runs a year. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. And, you know, that's a lot of runners enjoying the camaraderie, the the sports, the fitness of it. But, I mean, what I had brought up in the intro is the economic development aspect. Talk a little bit about the giving back to community and the economic development driver that you bring to the table. So... For example, we have an event called Explore Puyallup, and it's a scavenger style, and we mm-hmm. high, you know, we find the really unique things about the Puyallup community. Mm-hmm. But we also put in enough time that people can go to other businesses mm-hmm. and put money into those businesses, and then we ask them to bring them back to us, and we'll put them in for a drawing as a receipt, sure. so we can track that. Right. We're all about like the fact that if you don't have community, we can't exist. Right. So we understand that 100%. So mm-hmm. it's about community. Yeah. Dollar-wise, too, I mean, I, you know, some of the um, beer runs that you do and, you know, when you have, you know, 30, 40, 50 people participating in a run and then all ending up at a bar restaurant together, yeah. that's business that restaurant would not have or otherwise had that evening and often right. on an off night. That's right. And so you think about those dollars. Right. So we haven't done the math for 2023 to 2024, mm-hmm. but in 2022 to actually tomorrow night, um, 2023, um, we put about $23,000 into the downtown core business restaurants and That's South fantastic. Sound running. So yeah. I love that you're tracking that. Yeah. Oh, awesome. What's your uh, superhero power? Um. I guess my superhero power would be pretty much the ability to change midway through. That's uh, actually a fa- <laughs> adaptive leadership. Yeah, I, I love it. I would say you're, you're quite the champion of community as well. Well, I appreciate that. I have, you know, I have a big passion, you know, about being, cons- you know, conservation wise. I'm all about sustainability. Mm-hmm. I love that. Um, but I also believe in active transportation and lowering the carbon footprint, whether it's business-wise or personally as well. Yeah, well, I think a lot of those um, advocacy issues are something you're kind of, you've got the right collaborators, you're convening and part of all those discussions. And yeah, that's an admirable trait of yours. For it is. Sure. Well, thank you. It's important to hear. Yeah. Where do you see yourself in five years? Five years, I still see ourselves doing this. You know, mm-hmm. we talk about it all the time. We don't want to be bigger. Mm-hmm. We just want to be better. Mm-hmm. And by better, it means lowering our car, you know, our carbon footprint. Yeah. And what we have done is being cupless. Mm-hmm. So we say, you know, we provide the water, you bring the cups, mm-hmm. and we have reusable cups. We've had some great big sponsorship come across the board with like Hydropack, you know, so they provide us with a lot of reusable cups. Nice. Um, bib boards, so we can ditch our safety pins. And some of our local restaurants have given us gift cards so we can do um, carpool initiatives. And that so that even makes it more fun so people yeah. can do that but the big thing now is you know i stood on this platform last year with the conservation district mm-hmm. is air quality and wildfire awareness mm-hmm. and how important that is mm-hmm. and as we move forward we want to make sure people understand that there's hidden gems in our community you just got to get out and walk and find them right well you're certainly exposing them to many of them give us an, uh, a couple of examples of some upcoming runs that folks might want to join um well we're the official <coughs> race of the daffodil festival so oh. that's um april 7th explore puyallup is coming up mm-hmm. on april 21st and then gotta love seiko de mayo and i'm yeah. really excited <laughs> about our partnership again this year with you guys at yeah. red white and kaboom yes 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 absolutely Well, again, all things fun sports. Um, You guys are wonderful. You're everywhere. You're um, great supporters of the community. We appreciate all that you do. Uh, Again, featuring Kim this month because of Women's History Month. And and again, just kind of bouncing our way to women who we think are making a mark in this significant time period here in the history of Puyallup. And you are certainly one of them. Well, thank you, Tara. And thank you for the Chamber for everything you do for us. Absolutely. All right. That's a C-suite wrap right there. Thank you so much for tuning in. We have more fantastic women that will be Um, unpacking here shortly. Thanks again. Thanks, Kim. Thank you.